Hey everybody, welcome back to the Kit Play Enthusiast YouTube channel. If you're just joining us, my name is Mark Pensenstadler and what you're watching is the complete build series of a Zenith CH750 Super Duty. On the previous video, I asked you to take a guess on what these nut plates are for that I installed in the end rib of the horizontal stabilizer. Most of you guessed wrong. One guy so far guessed correctly. It is for a GoPro mount. I did the same thing on the top of my rudder also. Well, just like for the horizontal stabilizer, I have the plans out here for the elevator. I can see all the parts that I need. I can see the part numbers down here in the corner. I have printed out the construction manual, so that's ready to go with the first few steps. And I have laid out on the workbench here all of the, well, most of the elevator parts. There's some parts in the center that I don't have here, and obviously the skins. But this is the basic skeleton of the elevator. And laying them out like this lets me make sure that I have all the parts. I can organize them and see where they go. And it just makes the first few steps a little bit easier. The next step is to go through all the parts and deburr any holes that might need deburred sand any edges that might need smoothed out. I will remove all of the labels, scuff them, clean them, and prime them, and then I'm ready to start assembling. I mentioned in the last video that I really like deburring these holes with a file because it doesn't countersink them like the regular deburring tool, and it's a lot faster. I noticed there was a little bit of a burr on the edges of the spar, so I just used 400 grit sandpaper and quickly took those down to get a nice smooth finish. Once I was done, flipped it over, do the same thing to the other side. I noticed a little bit of rough edges on some of the other parts, so any part that didn't have a nice perfectly smooth edge, I sanded down with the 400 grit sandpaper to make it smooth. If you look at the two elevator end ribs, they are not symmetrical. So the manual has you draw a line through the tooling holes and then you'll see that there's actually a top and a bottom to these ribs. And I drew the line through the tooling holes, kind of down the middle of the rib, and then you'll see a larger space on actually the top side. And I just marked that with an arrow facing up so I know which side is top and which side is bottom. Just following the steps in the manual, I clecoed these end angles to the elevator end ribs. There are two steel elevator hinge pins that come with the kit, and they get riveted to the inside of those end ribs, so I need to find them. I remember seeing them during the inventory, but I can't remember where they're at. This box has all the steel parts in it, so I figured they'd be in there but I didn't see them in there. So I went through these other huge boxes of parts. I couldn't find them in there. So the search was on for these elusive hinge pins. I couldn't find them anywhere, so I started going through the bags in this box, and then look what was right in front of me. These stupid elevator pins. The manual says to drill out the hole in the ribs to fit the pin, but the hole in the ribs was already drilled the correct size, but it was a little tight, and I wanted to open it up a little bit to account for the primer and paint that will be on the steel part. So I just opened up the holes just a little bit, just to make it a tad looser fit. Now if you're building a Super Duty, you'll notice that most of the holes are drilled to final size. 
But there are some pieces that do require you to open up the holes to the correct size. These little uh, end angles for the end ribs are one of those pieces. They were drilled for A4 and I had to drill them out for an A5 rivet. And once all of the parts are prepped, you need to pay attention to the orientation of the elevator spar. See these two lines of rivet holes? That's for the elevator trim and that goes on the left side. So don't put your spar upside down. And of course, once your parts are prepped, it's time to start Clico on them, them together to build your elevator skeleton. Reference your plans to make sure you put this bracket on the correct side of the spar. Notice this end rib has the top on the top side. Always check your plans for the proper rivet size, and if the hole in the part is too small, simply drill it out. This is the elevator channel L angle, and this is the elevator channel. And these little things get riveted or clicoed for now onto the ends. But I just wanted to point out with these, you notice this is a little bit different this side is beveled and this side is not. So obviously the beveled side would be where the elevator gets smaller and comes together. So you just wanna make sure you put it on correctly, but you really can't put it on wrong because if you try to put it on wrong, the holes in here won't line up. But it's just something to, to look for, to pay attention to. This is one of the things I like about how Zenith designs this kit is, you know, they make the holes so you cannot put it on the wrong way that's pretty smart to do so there we go now this is ready to clico in between the ribs I've checked off each of the steps that I've completed, and the last step on the page is to start riveting. So with the elevator skeleton Clico together, all the parts fit nicely. It's time to start riveting. If you're not going to prime, then you can rivet. I am going to disassemble this and prime all of the parts, but once they're primed, I know that everything fits correctly, and I can rivet it together. Now one other thing I wanted to do before I prime these parts is drill the other two holes in this steel elevator hinge. So the piece goes in, actually goes in from the back. So if I put it in like that, I need to match drill these two holes, but I want to make sure this piece is straight. In other words, like this. I don't want it to be like this or this. So what I will do is draw a line down the middle like I did on this one. And I put it on these blocks because it has a weld on the back. So if I just lay it on the workbench, it's just a little bit wobbly. So I'll put it like this. And I'm just using a ruler and a Sharpie. We'll get a line on one side. And a line on the other side. And now when I put the piece back in here, I can see my line through those holes. I know that it's lined up and I can just match drill it. I've drilled the first hole in there. I put a Clico in it to hold it in position. And now I'll drill this hole. Yeah. 
And now this goes on the inside of the rib. So if I Clico it in place now with the holes drilled, Well, you can see it, there it is now. Now I just need to prime this part and paint it before I install it and rivet it, but it is installed and drilled to the rib. Now, speaking of priming parts, a lot of people are wondering how much primer weighs on an airplane. And I don't think anybody really knows, but I decided to weigh this elevator rib before I primed it. And then I weighed it again after I primed it. So it was 1.3 ounces before primer, 1.4 ounces after primer. Well, I now have all of the parts primed for the skeleton. It's ready to rivet together. That's on the next video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.